Pamela Hobart here with Existential Sandwich, facing productivity, complicated problems, existential problems all together. I'm here with a video that may come across as a rant about this email I received eight days ago now. Now, first of all, this has nothing really to do with Ali Abdal or this author, Matthew Dix. I'm just using this as an example of um, something that drives me crazy. But anyway, so I get this email, how to make every minute count. I mean, just that subject line makes my blood pressure shoot up. Like, I realize the point is to get more out of life, but if you are like an anxious, neurotic person, raising the stakes on every minute may not be the best strategy for this. So let's dig in. Hey friends, this week I want to share an excerpt from the book, Some Day Is Today, Matthew Dix reports, I've written 11 books and published nine because I don't wait for the right moment to write. Okay, great. I don't waste time on preciousness, pretentiousness, and perfection. Yeah, good for you. Here's what he does. He writes all year long before his kids wake up at lunchtime. I'm actually writing the sentence on a Friday during my lunch break. I write while waiting for the water to boil for spaghetti. I write while the mechanic changes my oil at Jiffy Lube. I write in the first few minutes of a meeting that has failed to start on time. Time out. Time out. Look, there are people like this. I know because my husband, Bern Hobart, who's a professional writer, is one. He can write in any chunk of time, even if it's like 10 seconds long and all three, kids of our all three of our kids are screaming. He can write at those times. I can't. Maybe you can't either. This message is good, that if you wait for the right time to write, you'll never write. That is totally fair. But the way that implementation looks is going to vary. And if you cannot write or read or meditate while your spaghetti is boiling, I see you. I see you. If that doesn't make your life feel more worthwhile, more worthwhile and more spacious and like it has more achievement and more of what you want, if that makes you feel worse, it's okay. It's okay. Again, this high level message is fine. The high level message is fine. Yeah, we all have the same number of hours in the day, but we also have our own psychologies. One thing having kids has taught me is like, you know, I'm the only one who drives them around. They go to school, they come home, they have like, my daughter goes to dance. You know, my days are really, really fragmented. I have had to learn how to use fragmented time. And that is a powerful message. I do more on a day with three kids running them around than I ever did in any day, like after I quit grad school and I was loafing around and like day drinking and stuff. But, but I have also had to push back, push back at every turn against excess task switching, more task switching than actually benefits me, right? Like some task switching, a lot of task switching is necessary in order for me to do the things I want to do, like speak with clients and write blog posts and now make these videos. And, you know, I switch between unloading the dishwasher and changing someone's shitty diaper and whatever. That is fine. But if I were writing like in the four additional minutes it took my kids to finish dinner, I would be losing my fucking mind. Find your happy medium. Find your happy medium. You don't have to wait for the perfect time, but you don't have to write while the spaghetti boils. I see you. It doesn't have to be like that. This has been a rants, rants with existential sandwich with Pamela J. Hobart. I hope that you use your time well the rest of this week, but well for you. Go get them, tiger.